Hello everyone, this is Tom Wonderland, and welcome back to more of Pokemon Stadium 2. I actually had so much trouble just trying to do the intro to this video here. <laughs> it, it almost could have been, if you want to call it this, a blooper reel in a sense, just because I kept saying the wrong things or certain words would roll off in a certain direction that were unintentional. But yeah, Tobe Wonderland here, and we are going to do Pokecup Master Ball difficulty level. And oh my god, I know a lot of you are just thinking right now, where have you been? Well, I'll explain that here in just a minute, but first I just want to address for this cup, Nintendo Power recommends that you use Afiro, Quagsire, Haunter, Polyrath, Kadabra, and Raichu. Uh, most of them I would say are pretty good, but there's a few that I do change for the team that I use for this particular cup. And I just went ahead and skipped to where I picked the last one. Uh, my team actually consisted of uh, Charizard with a Charcoal, uh, Blastoise with Mystic Water, Kadabra with a Scope Lens, Donfin with a Quick Claw, Primeape holding a Miracle Berry, and I am choosing a Zapdos with Bright Powder as the item. And as before, that comes from the Silver Game Pack that my friend had let me borrow. And I thank her very much for that. <laughs> um, if you don't have any of those items, I'll go ahead and say this quick before the first battle begins. Um, well, these are the same trainers that you fought in the Great Ball difficulty level. I'll go ahead and say that. Get that out of the way. Um, but for the uh, just the standard items, uh, for Charizard, uh, Paralyzed Cure Berry would probably be good for it. And then for Blastoise, you'll want just the regular berry. Kadabra, I'd say Bitterberry would be good. Donphan, as before, Ice Berry works best. Uh, Primeape, uh, Mint Berry would be good. And Zapdos, a Burnt Berry is all that you're really left with, but you could still use it to your advantage in certain situations. Okay, we got all that out of the way. And yeah, sorry, it's been, what, like two weeks, I think, at this point, that I've last updated anything? Yeah, I'm really sorry about that. A lot of that was just, um, number one thing I'm going to talk about here now. Issues with the laptop. The laptop I'm using now was having very severe issues with where it would just turn off at certain points, like after the fans would run for a certain period of time and it would, like, really heat up. And basically, it would just shut off. It go to a, a black screen and whatever he was working on just it either got lost or it was temporarily saved as a matter of fact um the video that you're currently watching right now like the video not the commentary this is post commentary if you couldn't tell um because i actually lost my original commentary because of a black screen audacity didn't keep the file but somehow pinnacle studio the editing program I use for capturing my or, well it is an editing program but I use it mainly for capturing my actual video from the game console uh, Pinnacle Studio did save um, my game video up to battle 5 it's not going to matter because I had to cut it out anyway because it was midway through battle 5 that it ended up just shutting off and yeah, that's really strange to just abruptly stop a battle like that, so I decided the best solution was to just restart the cup again and work my way back up to that battle. And uh, to be safe, I am going to do the last four battles um, in post-commentary as well, because I really don't want to take the risk of losing any more data again. And it gets pretty tiring when you repeat the same exact rants over and over. <laughs> I'll go ahead and say that quick. But yeah, uh, that's the number one reason that's really been slowing me down uh, lately. Um, I did do a little tinkering with uh, my laptop, and I did discover something that might have been causing it. When I uh, opened it up, like literally, like flipped the laptop over, unscrewed the hinges out to like look inside it, like the insides of the laptop. There was a lot of dust that was just smothered all over the fans and the vents that are inside it. And uh, I, I will clean that out. And I don't know that I really recommend this, but I actually used the hairdryer to like get air to blow everything out. Because I I couldn't get like the regular dust remover spray cans 
to get everything out, but the hair dryer, combined with the heat, and I know that's risky getting hot air in laptops like that, but I really didn't have anything else to blow the stuff out, so, yeah. But after doing that, um, I'm noticing that my fans aren't running super loud right now, like right now, I, I can't even hear them running. If they're running at all, I can't hear them. Um, but yeah, it would be like running really loud, and then whenever that happens, it causes heat to generate. It, I don't know that it's just the fan itself, but like the process, like with all that dirt slowing things down like that, it causes processes to like heat up the insides of the laptop, and I think that's what has been causing the black screens that I've been describing. But yeah, that. Like I said, that was my number one problem here this past, well not even just the past couple weeks, this has actually been ongoing for a few months, to be honest. Uh, it just wasn't as severe back then, I wasn't really taking it serious, it just happened like one, one time I was like, oh, that's interesting that my laptop did that. And then, like shortly after that, it happened like a couple more times, and that's when I started wondering, okay, what's going on here? And then, just now, lately, it, it was, like, really, it was interfering, like, whenever I used Movie Maker or, well, the recording, even, like, through Pinnacle Studio, as I was recording this Let's Play, uh, it just shut off, like, midway through the cup. About half an hour in. Yeah, I was just, like, a little bit panicked. I'm like, what am I gonna do here? I gotta do something. <laughs> And yeah, I know, I just kind of breezed through that first battle. I, I'm taking the time to explain this now, though, since the first few battles usually are easy. Uh, against that first trainer, you shouldn't have too much difficulty. Um, I will go ahead and say this quick, though. Uh, Pokecup Master Ball is easily... Oops. Oh my god, that is the like poor choice of words that right there. It is not easy. I, I was actually saying the word easily, but... What I meant to say was, uh, Poke Cup Master Ball is arguably the hardest cup in round one of Pokemon Stadium 2. Uh, no lie, this is actually a very difficult cup. And if it's your first time playing this game, it wouldn't surprise me to hear that it takes you more than one try to beat it. Because I can go ahead and tell you, it, the first time I ever played it, it took me several tries to beat it. Um, this cup, like I said, though, alone, it's not... The first two battles are fine, but after that, like, even Battle 3, starting with Battle 3, it gets really insane. Uh, that's where you gotta really focus on, like, strategies and using certain Pokémon to uh, put them in a good position to fight the enemies that you'll be encountering, which you'll see here in a little bit after we get past the Greenhorns, I so to say. Yeah, in Battle 2, uh, it's the same situation as Battle 1. You really don't have to worry too much about the trainers here. Uh, the only thing I could really bring up here is the uh, pincer. I believe it does no guillotine, if I'm not mistaken. But it it never did anything threatening beyond sword stance. As you see right there, it just did it, actually. It, it really isn't that big of a threat. Guillotine alone is only 30% accurate. Slightly higher because it is level 52 if you're using the rental Pokemon. Uh, it's only like a slight percentage increase though. Very slight. Um, but yeah, there's not much to say about the trainers right now. Besides that, really. Um... I'm actually, uh, how do I explain this? Oh, I meant to address this earlier as well. Um, another thing that's been uh, slowing me down from being able to record lately, if you probably could figure out by now, is uh, college. Yeah, I've been pretty busy lately. Uh, and I know that's a pretty, like, commonly used excuse that's overused, actually, as a matter of fact. It's an excuse that is usually almost always valid, whenever the person does say that, I will go ahead and say that, but for me, I have been busy, I can assure you. Um, 
lately with the classes that I've been doing, I've had to do like field work where, you know, I, I have to get outside more, so I really haven't been able to like just take time on my own and to, like sit down at a computer and just record. And, and I also, um, I do commute to the college I go to, but it's, it's not like a simple 10 minute drive. It actually does take me like 40, it takes me 45 minutes to get to the college alone and back. Um, and that was because, uh, I discovered the rates were so much cheaper to just do it that way than to, uh, like get an apartment or a dorm or anything like that. And, and it's not bad. Um, I can actually get there in less time because I just recently found out some shortcuts, quote unquote, <laughs> shortcuts. Um, yeah, it actually will save me more time. Uh, so it actually will only take probably about 35 minutes, maybe. I'd have to try them and see, though. Yeah, I know that does sound awfully long just to go to college, but I don't go there every day. So that, that helps, too, uh, with the current schedule that I have. But yeah, um, I've had to like do a lot of field work with some of my classes lately. Um, it, and like I said, that just really hasn't given me much chance to just actually like sit down at the computer and record, basically. I don't really know how else to say that, but uh, in addition to that, like even when I do get home, I, a lot of my time has been spent... Or, this tent, I'm getting words mixed up already. A lot of my time has been spent studying, and I've had a lot of tests lately too. Like, not really... Nothing's ever multiple choice though with what I've done lately. It's all like writing enhance. So, I had to really focus on what I'm studying here, like to make sure I'm giving valid answers. I can't just make stuff up. But yeah, that's what's been going on with me lately. Um, because I have figured out uh, that cleaning my laptop has helped significantly with the uh, black screen issues, I don't think that... T to be safe, I'm not going to guarantee this, but hopefully there shouldn't be more problems with that. At least I don't think there will be. Um, but beyond that... Uh, it should be sometime soon that I actually be able to get a more structured schedule with when I'm going to update stuff. And there's actually another game mode coming up in Stadium 2 that we'll be getting to here in a little bit. Um, you probably already know what it is. I'll just go ahead and say it. It's uh, the Gym Leader Castle. Um, in addition to the main Stadium mode, there's also Gym Leader Castle. This was the same for the first Pokemon Stadium game. Uh, yeah... The battles for that are going to be done like at a bit more fast-paced manner, so updating actually shouldn't be too much of a problem for that. And I already have most of the teams figured out for what I'm going to use for that game mode as well. So everything should work out okay, I think. And yeah, um, I know I've been rambling on and on here. Like This is almost, in a way, like an update video of sorts. And I really haven't been focusing on some of these battles here. But that's all I really wanted to say about like what's been going on for me lately, and yeah, updates should be coming more often now though. Uh, I don't foresee too many difficulties since I've I've kind of like uh, I know I said this before. I kind of like experimented with LPing itself with the first hundred videos that I've already uploaded, so. I'm like learning different things here, like even even now, like right now, um, I actually uh, found out that recording my videos in MPEG format as opposed to AVI, which is actually uh, what I was doing from the start. I don't know if I ever mentioned anything. I don't think I ever said anything about that actually. Um, but yeah, like the first hundred videos or so, I actually was recording all my videos in AVI format with my uh, capturing program. And apparently that's, that is known to cause more lag when you use AVI format, so that's why I switched to MPEG, so hopefully there will be a difference starting now as far as lag goes. I'm even looking at my video now and I am not seeing any lag at all, so that's good that I'm noticing the change already. Speaking of which, uh, looking at the battle here. Let me go ahead and say here, Battle 3, from this point on, the cup gets insane. Uh, even this battle alone can really uh, get you insane. 
This particular battle, of the first four battles, it's always battle three that's always the the more challenging of the four, first four that you go up against. I don't know why that is, but it's always battle three for all these cups. But for this guy, the fire breather, Cliff, um, he'll either have, I mean, I suppose he doesn't have to go with this, but he almost always has one or the other. In this case, he has the Arcanine, so that was good for me. Blastoise barely took it out, though, as it was. Um, but if he doesn't have the Arcanine, he'll have the Dodrio instead. And if he has the Dodrio, all I gotta say is that can really cause you problems. Uh, the Dodrio, um... It, it has a very high attack stat and speed, like attack and speed are super high, and it knows try attack, and that move is a bitch. I'm sorry about the language, but that move is a bitch. In addition to doing so much damage, it has a 20% chance of giving you one of three status conditions, and it almost always does every time I've fought that Dodrio. Um, my friends, one of my friends had actually described it as, um... I think rubber band AI is how she said it. And that's what that usually means from what I'm aware of the term at least. Rubber band AI refers to when the computer can catch up with you much easier and things tend to go in their favor more. So yeah, as she said, rubber band AI with the opponents here. And this is one of those examples, the Dodrio. I'm just so glad I didn't fight it here. But if you go against that Dodrio, um, believe it or not, Donfin actually is not too bad to use against it. Uh, use Sandstorm, and then keep using Growl. That would be the strategy I could really recommend for that. Um, Earthquake can't hit it, because it's part flying. But the Sandstorm should work okay, and then as long as you keep using Growl, uh, that'll whittle it down. And then if... Donfin will more than likely faint, and in the case that it does... That's fine, just pull out something else, but because you use Growl at least a couple times, I would hope, at that point, uh, Growl should reduce its attack stat to a pretty low level, where its tri attacks not going to be too cumbersome for the next Pokémon, at least. That's just the best strategy I could really recommend if you fight that Dodrio, because I'm only mentioning that because it is a really tough opponent that if you do face Dodrio, as opposed to Arcanine. I just thought I'd bring that up, though. And it's all—it's almost a 50-50 chance of what you'll face. It's either the Arcanine or the Dodrio, and it's because their levels are so high. Um, that's why he can only pick one or the other. Uh, the Dodrio and the Arcanine are at level 54. And because of the Pokecup rules, you can't have a combination where the total exceeds 155 for your three battle Pokemon. So yeah. That's what's up with that. And at least I fought the Arcanine. And as you see, this is almost uh, uh, put to my advantage with this particular point. A lot of them will also use Sunny Day, so that's why Charizard is also good to have. But you also want Charizard because of the Executor. He almost always uses it as well. So you definitely want Charizard on your team there for that. Other than that, um, that's really the main threats with the Fire Breather. Uh, with the Arcanine, if he uses it instead, it does no Dragon Breath. And Dig, it has used Dig before. Oddly enough, it doesn't have a Fire move. For being a Fire type, it has a weird assortment of moves. I think it also knows Extreme Speed, if I'm not mistaken. And it's like one of the only... Pokemon, except for the Crystal version Dratini, if you uh, do the event properly to obtain that in the Dragon's Den. Uh, but other than that, Arcanine, I believe, is one of the only Pokemon that can learn uh, um, Extreme Speed. And you've probably already noticed, I had to do like transitions here. The only reason I did that was because I'm doing this post-commentary. And I figured it'd save time if I cut out like certain sections where it's just taking up time. Just thought I'd go ahead and say that quick. And yeah, this is Battle 4. As I said earlier, it's I really should have been keeping up to speed with these battles, but I really need to get those updates put out first before I actually 
got to these main battles. The first two battles are pretty simple. If you watched what I did, um, you'll pretty much be okay. And even if it, they use other Pokemon than what they did, it's not too different. So I don't think you'll have too much of an issue with the first two battles. And for this battle, um, most of them, not all of them, but most do know Toxic. So um, just be cautious of that. Although, it seems like a popular strategy on this game, but it's not one that, like, is, like, super threatening. I don't really know how to explain it. Toxic does double damage over each turn that it activates, but till that, till it actually takes away all your health, which would be in six turns, if I'm not mistaken. That's how it works. It's like structure will, like, take you out in six turns or something if you're at full HP. And yeah, it also helps that, uh, Cadaver had that scope lens. I'm sure that's what kicked in there. Because I got a critical hit on that ride on. And I actually did something that I shouldn't have. I actually would recommend that you use, uh, Reflect before you use Psychic against Rhydon if you're using Cadaver. Because that Rhydon does no Hyper Beam. And if you use Reflect before that happens, yeah, that's a, that's a good way to keep yourself alive. And this Cloister uh, is just going to keep using Protect so that Toxic will keep kicking in. Uh, keep in mind, even if you don't have a good type of Ange, Cloister's special defense is incredibly low. So even if you don't have like a, if you don't have a Grass or Electric Pokemon, any other kind of like special type should be okay, because as I said, it has low special defense. And yeah, there's not much else to say about this battle, and the only reason I keep missing is because of the Protect. In addition to Toxic, um, some of the Pokémon also use other moves, such as Protect, so that they don't take damage and so that the Toxic can kick in. And I should point out, if you face the Weezing, it does no explosion, so watch out for that. And it also knows Thunder and Fire Blast. Yeah, Weezing can learn those moves. And its other move is Sludge Bomb. Which is pretty standard. I mean, it's a poison Pokemon, so that just makes sense. But the element of surprise is those other three moves it has. Explosion, Thunder, and Fire Blast. To kind of catch you off guard. But other than that, it's nothing serious. And that's the end of the battle. Already halfway through. And unfortunately, this is where the video cuts off because of the lovely black screens. So, I'm going to pause here shortly, and I will resume with the remaining four battles. So I'll see you soon.